When you're a young person and you have a dream and you have no idea how you're going to pursue that dream, but you want to make it true, you stick to it and you do everything you can to accomplish that. Well, that really was the goal of Leticia Ordaz as she was a young woman growing up. And now she is the weekend anchor at KCRA TV in Sacramento. And not only is she a newswoman, but she's also an author and she's penned a couple of books that are really interesting. One of them is one that I want to talk to her about. Leticia Ordaz, welcome. Nice to have you with us. Thank you so much, Carlos. Thank you for letting us share uh, my story and hopefully inspiring young boys and girls in the community. So Mr. McCaw is in the background. I see him. That's a children's book that I want to talk about. But I want to talk about that girl on TV, Could Be Me. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what was the genesis of that book? Why, why did you write that book? I wrote it because I was that girl on TV Actually, I wanted to be that girl on TV. And since I was five years old, I would always watch the news. And the first page of the book, I'm a little five-year-old girl watching the noticias, the news, not seeing anyone who looks like me. And I'm asking my mom, already noticing that there's no one who's brown on the news. So I question my mom and ask her, why isn't anyone like me on the news? And she says, it's okay, Miha, I go to college and you will be that girl on the news. So I just think representation is so important. And I know not everyone wants to be on the news, but I hope this encourages young girls and boys that if they want to do something and they don't see someone that looks like them, that they still go after their dreams. Right. Let me see the book because I think the cover is very emblematic. There, there she is, uh, the young girl with, uh, with you know, the, the whole excitement of being a newswoman with the microphone. And that little girl on TV uh, could be you. And in fact, it, you know, it's funny because we all have an idea of what our future is going to look like. I had no idea that I would be on television. But like you, I thought, if Walter Cronkite can be on TV, so can I. And yes. so it's interesting that you, you, you think similarly. And that, that doesn't really, that doesn't matter what color your skin. It ma matters what your desire is, what dreams you have. And, and you've put this all down, not only in English for children to read, but also in Spanish. Tell me what motivated that. Definitely wanted to write a bilingual book for the community because I think that immigrant children can really benefit from seeing a book like this. My parents are immigrant. I'm the first in my family to go to college. So it shows my parents that were farm workers and only had up to a sixth grade education. And, I, and they, they have inspired me so much that they are my true heroes in all of this. And I want kids to be proud of their parents, to be proud to speak another language and to know that they too can go to college at, despite what anyone says, they can achieve their dreams. Tell me how it's been in the newsroom. What, what do you think your role is in today's newsroom? I think my role is to be a voice for everyone in the community, whether it be the homeless, uh, people of color, people in disadvantaged communities. I hope that they see me and that they can relate to me and that they can believe me because I'm giving them the facts. There's been such a debate going on right now, and I think that local news really provides a source, an important source of information for people. We are not commentators. We are not giving you our opinion. We are giving you the facts. And you're right. Absolutely. I think local news goes way up, up, up and above the uh, what the national media does. And I, I hate when we get painted with the same brush because we, we have a much different mission and our community is very close to us and it's very important. All right. I love that book, but the book behind you, Mr. McCaw, I have a copy of it right here. It's tell me a little bit about the two boys that are in this book. And it's also in Spanish and English. Tell me a little bit about the book and the two boys in the book. It definitely. Well, since becoming a mother nine years ago, it was really my mission to write a book. Life got in the way. And then two years ago, <laughs> the perfect opportunity presented itself. Uh, we were in Cabo San Lucas on a family vacation. We go there with our kite every summer and Hurricane Bud happened to be coming by. But we thought, let's just go fly our kite one last time <laughs> before it gets crazy out there. And so we went out there and the kids call it their magical kite. They call it Mr. McCaw. We ended up losing it in the storm. A huge gust of wind came in, blew the kite away. And we thought, oh no, we are never gonna get our kids kite back. But what we saw was a whole community coming together, everyone dropping what they were doing instead of putting sandbags by the door. They ran to us and helped our little boys uh, the kite ended up getting stuck in a palm tree. Somebody climbed up the biggest palm tree I've ever seen, and they rescued 
our kite. And I said, what a beautiful story to tell. We are talking about a village. We are showing the kindness in people and we are showing our children that what happens to them really matters. So then I put it uh, to paper and now it's a book. Uh, it's fantastic. And the two boys in the book uh, are indeed your your children, which is wonderful. But uh, I love the illustrations. I love the coloring. And I love the fact that it, I can read this book in Spanish and in English and that kids will get a chance to understand what the word papalote means. Uh, it's one of my favorite words. Papalote and popocatepetl are two of my favorite words to say in Spanish <laughs> when you want to show up. <laughs> Well, I really hope that it inspires more kids to want to learn Spanish and for kids who speak Spanish already, that it makes them proud of yeah. their language, yeah. that maybe they want to speak it more. I've been donating my books to migrant programs and some of the kids are telling me that they've never owned a book before. So this is so powerful for me that I'm able to, to give these books away and that their families are able for the first time to be able to pick up, pick up a book in a language that they understand. So whether yeah. you speak English, in Spanish, families can relate. What a great mission. And of course, Celita Lindo is your publishing company. You're gonna be publishing away, writing more books than you'll ever thought. And it'll get away, get in the way of your news business. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a lot of fun though. I think it's, it's such a rewarding mission to be able to read to children around the world yeah. virtually. I never imagined that I'd be able, because of the pandemic, to read to children in hospitals and give them a little bit of adventure. Let them imagine that they are out flying a magical kite. So it's been such a rewarding journey. So look for those two books, That Girl on TV Could Be Me and uh, Mr. The Adventures of Mr. Macaw uh, by Leticia Ordaz, a KCRA anchor. So great to meet you, so great to talk to you, continued success to you, and I'm so very proud of the work that you're doing. Carlos, thank you so much for having me and letting me tell my story.